became a hit. People be mad at me sometimes, though, and people make comments too, like, and and in some in the nicest way too. But like, you know, Eternity, who's on here, um, she, you know, she was cool, but like, she was like, I want to see. She's like, you have a picture, so I texted her a picture, and she was like, oh, not what I expected, but because she's because she looks, she's she's very fair skinned because she's she's half Spanish too, so she and she dyes she bleaches her hair blonde, which actually looks really good on her, but she, um. But eternity, and then some of the girls be be tripping at the club. They're like, they're like who, what, like who's your girlfriend? I'm like, I'll get out of here. They're like, how come you don't you don't get with a sister? I was like, it just that's just not the way it happened. I was like, I didn't. If 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 one of y'all would have stepped and been as classy as she was and did what she was doing, and and would have been. been, and would have worked it up slowly. Like 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 there was no like. She got to know me over time. Like she would make a point to say hello to me every time she came in and then started giving me a hug when she came in. Then her sister, you know, and then like they would always come up to me and make a point to talk to me. So they got like I got to know them over a period of six months. Like it wasn't like just like like one day they were like, hey, let's go. Let's go go out and and get drunk. Like it was like, no, it was like, you know, I'm coming. back. I'll see you tomorrow. She made a point to tell me I'm coming back tomorrow and I'm single. Like, she made a point to try if, to get to know you, and that's what I was talking about with somebody on here. That all guys just want is that uh, show that you like or you're interested in. And so if they show that if they see the interest, which you did, and that's why you turned, maybe we should go. Oh, because you seen the interest, she showed it. Yeah. to you. you know what I mean. And, and the, the thing is, is that interest. I had I had, my friend Sarah was hanging out with me all the time, and there was this one lady who who. Like I guess had a crush on me, and she she kept on pushing all the time. She's like, "You haven't fucked her yet," and I was like, "No, she's my friend." I was like, "But you guys are together all the time." I was like, "What does that mean?" Because a guy is hanging out with a woman, and we happen to hang out every day. I'm supposed to be hitting that. And I was like, "What? Do, how does that make any sense?" And to the point where I was like, "Yo, you need to cut this out." I was like, "What the hell?" Did I asked. Her? I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" I was like, "Is that what you think that everybody has to do all the time? That because a guy and a girl are hanging out, that they have to be having sex all the time?" And then. When I started dating Marlene, she was the same thing. She's like, when are you going to hook, hook, hit that? When are you going to hook up? She's like, you guys haven't had sex yet? And I was like, yo, slow down. <laughs> I was like, why Like, why are you so obsessed with that? I was like, what is your deal? Like, yeah. I was like, take, I was like, I just, yeah, the girl is gorgeous. And like, even to the point where there were, there were two guys who were walking out after me, they, right behind me. I didn't even notice them because I was all focused on, on her. And after I said that and she walked out, they were like, yo, they're like, you're my hero. They're like, how do you do that? And I was like, what? I was like, I don't, I don't know. I just asked her out. I didn't even know that I did. I was like, cause then the next day I couldn't stop thinking about it. And so then I made sure I sealed the deal the next day. I got her some flowers, got her 13 flowers. I got one, one rose separate. And when she walked in with her sister, I was like, Hey, I got some for you. Gave that to her. Then at the end of the night, gave her the, the dozen roses with a vase with some nutrients. And then, and then I was like, okay, next thing is give me your number. And then the, that was on a Friday and whole, all day Saturday, she was texting me. And then on Sunday we set up a date for Monday. And then after that, it was like smooth sailing. So, and she, you know, she went up to New York. She just came back last night. And, um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty dope, you know, and we've just been talking every day. I just don't, this is what I say. If my, I don't know why my friends or anybody's friends out there, it, why are you worrying about if I hit the girl? Why are you worrying if I fucked her? Are, are you trying to get with her? Did yeah. you do it with her? Why are you worried about it, right? That's my girl what I'm with. If I'm married to a woman and we only have sex once every seven months, that's our business, you know what I mean? Why people worry about that shit, that little shit? I don't shit? know. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's their thing, but you know, it's it's been it's been really nice. But uh, you One know, love. I'm gonna give you this is me signing out. This has All me right, brother. I'm here on oh uh, cool. For docs and I've been here with Hakeem chilling. We're talking about relationship and all that. Don't drink the coffee with all kinds of sugar in it. Like <laughs> me, get black. And this has been a good one with Hakeem. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Chuck. Awesome. And I got Ellen Sadurth here in the queue. What's up? How are you doing? Uh, it's 11 o'clock on the East Coast, Eastern Standard hey, Time. Hello, hello, Ellen. How you doing? 
Good, good. I'm here in Chicago with Mom. I, I just heard y'all two talk, and you two guys, I absolutely love you two. I don't know how <laughs> I can say it without meeting you guys, but I wanted to just jump in real quick. Like I said, I was at Mom and just listen to uh, you two. You you type of men, you get drowned out in the crowd, in the, the, the media, stereo, society assumes for years, century, even biblically, or even not, that men are all lumped in that way. And so I love, I would love to hear more of you guys talk and others like you, like the contrarian, him, you guys get drowned out. And my son tell me that the, la the good guys get seen last. And it's true. And so that's what they expect because the narrative yeah. is for the woman to believe that the moment you talk to him, the moment you're in his presence, that he wants sex and not a talk. So I'm hoping that more of you and more of Chuck could tell them that this is not true. It is not us. And look, painting that Ellen, narrative. Ellen, don't get me wrong. Like, mm -hmm. I am very, very much into her. And that's like, it's not like I don't want to. Right? right. But I want to know that she's not psychotic. Right. First of all, and that she's not going to give me all kinds of trouble, which everything seems to be going on a good way. But mm -hmm. also there's other ways that I express my sexuality. Like I just I like to do really nice things with her and she's got kids and like just the fact that she's brought me into her family and, you know, and just just everything about our relationship is really there's a lot of intimacy yeah, and it's, it's, it's really nice how things are going. I mean, last night when she got home, she talked to me for an hour on the phone while she was in bed and just, we had a really nice conversation and she says, you know, I'm, I'll, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. And it's just, you know, I, she's like, I want to spend every day, you know, with you while I'm here. So, you know, and she's like talking to me about dropping little hints, like how she wants to move closer to be to be here and even when she was in new york she said i think that i want to be down in virginia now full time or at least most of the time and so just things like that you know it's mm -hmm. like i like i like how it's building up um you know i knew my wife two, two months before we we got together you know um mm -hmm. and then we were together for four years before she passed away and like you know i've had other relationships where things moved a little bit more quickly um the, the woman I was with before my wife, we, I think we hooked up like maybe the third date, but we were together for six years, mm -hmm. you know, and she's still my friend. She's because that's how we started off. We started off mm -hmm. as friends and we didn't have any bad breakup. It's just that she is a traveling musician, a professional violinist. And I was in one place, she was in another. And we just agreed to just not, we just weren't together. It wasn't like, I hate you. None of that happened. It was just, we, we moved on. And she met somebody. She's married now. She has two kids. And r right after that, I met my wife. So, you know, it's just sometimes that's that's not the that's just not how it needs to roll. Like, I just I just think that I like the way things are going. Like, I feel really good about it. There's other things that I don't feel good about. And so I just don't get involved in it, you know. So I think that there's a, a different way to go and be. Yep, and that's the way it should be because that's what we be wanting. And some women be thinking you want to go fast like that. And like I say, that's what society have men to be, and it's not enough. It's not enough of you guys saying that it's not me. And so you get drowned out and thrown in the background, and that's really in a marriage. Remember I told you I've been with my husband 35 years, and we've been married 31. And so there's... Yeah other intimacy as you're describing it's not about sex you don't get to learn anybody just by just having sex you only had sex you don't know them you should be able when you're with somebody and you're dating you should be able to go to a restaurant and learn to enough that lobsters make her allergic yeah. she's allergic to lobsters you should be able to know all of these things you know what i'm saying yeah i mean i i i, I went and met a woman and had sex with her the first night and then she proceeded to abuse me in, in all kinds of ways for for almost a year, you know? And it was just like, what the hell? 
it was like one of the worst situations I've ever been in in my life. And because there was nothing, there was no getting to know each other. You know, it was like, it was like one night. And then after that, the very first day that I went over to her place, she was yelling at me. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So, you know, I'm not saying that everything has to be like that because, you know, with the woman I was with for six years, you know, we got together pretty quickly, but it, you know, it worked out because we, we also had talked a lot uh, and because our first date wasn't until like maybe, maybe a month later and we talked on the phone all the time. So there was a little bit more connection there too. So I I don't know. I mean, it's not that I don't have the drive and that I don't want to, my body wants to, but there's a reason why we humans have an intellect. We There's a lot of things that we can do with our minds and to, to temper those things. And, you know, like in Passenger 57, the villain said to Wesley Snipes, he's like, that's just your 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 passion, you know, without the benefit of intellect or something like that. And I, I thought that was like one of the coolest lines coming from a villain. And, um, but it's like, and I, it made me think about that. I was like, yeah, man, I was like, we we do have intellect we have minds that we can use in so many other ways and so that sexual energy that i have gets expressed in so many other ways like i'm constantly wanting to do things not i don't know if the word is to impress her but just to kind of really let her know how much i want her and and so i just do little things like just i'm very responsive to so many things that make things simpler for her life i mean she's really busy she does a lot of stuff and i'm not going to jump in there and be a burden and just trying to be jumping all over her and crushing her all the time and taking her time away and texting her and being like how come you haven't got back to me and what do you do like all this stuff like that it's like you know it's 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 crazy um i'm glad that there are that there are a lot of other ways that we've connected really strongly without having to to go there um, and when it happens, I think it's, you know, going to be magnificent, but, and, but that's, that's, that's when it's right. You know what? That's, that's when the time is right. That is so true. And that's one thing I think that sex should come with understanding and once you understand, and then you can be, like you say, more in tune with that person and, uh, understanding the relationship and understanding what's going on. And I think you should know. Like my husband and I, even though he was in the military, I, I told you guys I came in and I came in with uh, two children. So the oldest one was barely two and the next one was one month. So he came by the house and stuff and he just sat there and just talked to me and went to sleep. So he was in the military. So uh, he, we just talked for the, he was out for four months and we just talked. And he was very gentle with talking. We did a lot of children stuff. We didn't do anything that didn't involve kids. Yeah. That's the thing, too, which I, I can tell that she appreciates as well, is that um, I've just been, when when I'm, when I'm we've gone on two, two of the dates that we've gone on, her kids have been there. And I've just been there just to support and make sure things were, it was just stuff for, for the kids. Like, actually, no, three. Um, it's just making because that's because that's one thing that's really attractive about her too is that she is she just loves 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 her kids and just and i can just tell that she's really all about them because the way that they they regard her the way that they are around her like she really is all about it. it's not a front it's not faking you can tell sometimes when somebody's like okay now you i'm gonna be around Mr. Hakeem, y'all better behave or else y'all are going to get a spanking when we exactly. get home. They're not scared of her. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not, like, they're, she just really is a good mom and her kids really adore her. And I'm like, man, this is, this is amazing. Because I actually left somebody um, many years ago because of the way she treated her daughter terribly. Uh, I actually just, without any warning, I was just like, I'm leaving. And I don't need to explain to you why, but you need to get right that with your daughter. So and I left. amazing, Hakeem, because how many men don't think of that? They just think of the ride, and you do know I mean ride, and yeah. regardless of the children and not into them, but you got to look at the big picture instead of just getting with the picture and getting like, oh, my goodness, dude, you need to take care of your daughter. Or for a woman, too, uh, like you said, she hadn't had a relationship for a while. She just her and her kids, and she wants that adult talk. 
and uh, to have a man in her life. And then, like you said, it is true. They get real engulfed in a man, and you stay over here, Mr. John is coming over here, and they forget all about the kids because of that emotional uh, yeah. uh, sexual healing that they wanted. And so this, but, is, a, this is a yeah. lot of good talk right here. Um, I just wanted to step in and, I appreciate and just listen you. to you guys. I sure appreciate you. I'll be seeing you again in real time, in live, in person. Yes. And I this told is going to be a, my, my year of wisdomers. Yeah. And so we have having a, a painting event, too. I'll tell you in the back channel. You give me your email address, and I'll let you know about that. That's in September, right. a painting event. But definitely, I'm going to meet you before September. Nice. But I'll let you know about that. It's a fundraiser to, to uh, raise awareness to kidney disease as well as organ okay. donor, being an organ donor. There you donor. go. So I'll send that to you, but definitely I want to. Thank you. I, I, you're welcome. Thank you. Definitely I'll be meeting you uh, at the bookstore. You know I love the bookstore. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to listen in, and you have an amazing day, and I'll be you listening too, in. Thanks and for coming up. Mama. You are so welcome. It's always a pleasure. I can't wait. I can't wait to, to see you, hug you on your shoulder. Yes. <laughs> Say, hey, this is my wisdom friend. That's right. <laughs> wisdom friend. What? He's a stranger. Yes, he is. <laughs> I told my husband, I said, hey, I got a wisdom friend, Hakeem. I'm going to meet him at the, um, at the library, uh, I mean, at the Barnes, Barnes & Noble. And, Noble yeah. and he, he thought I was, he, he, his mind went like, oh, stranger, don't be. <laughs> and then when he heard me say Barnes & Noble, he said, oh, okay, as long as it's open. And, you know, because we got strangers yeah. out there. You know what I'm saying? And I yes. said, this is a wisdom friend. And he said, okay. And he trusts my judgment from there. He, my husband is very fussy. We're very fussy about each other. As he should be. Mm-hmm. We don't play. We don't play mm -hmm. about each other. And just like I said, I'm in Chicago visiting mom, and we don't like to miss each other, not even for one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get that. Yep. But I'll be listening in. Amazing talk. I love this. All Thank right. you, Ellen. You're welcome. All right. All right. All right. We had Chuck and Miss Ellen Sudderth. Much appreciated. Much love. I originally started talking about the co a coffee paradox, which is I have a paradoxical effect to coffee it actually puts me to sleep i was on a chat for a little while with um sudoku moth earlier and um it was early in the morning after i got off my shift at the central 111 and actually probably right after i finished talking to um uh, marlene on the phone and and part way into the conversation i was like you know what i think i, I do need to try to go to sleep which is kind of a mistake because I was trying to talk to her, but she was talking about dreams, and um, I drank some coffee, and it put me right out at some point. I mean, of course, my body needed it, and I feel wide awake again, but also I had been wanting to talk about just for fun, really, because you can put whatever the heck you want in your coffee, just like I was talking to Chuck earlier, you know, like, he's like, what if your girl wants this or that, you know, pancakes, and I was like, I'm not a snob about it. I'll have you know, some sweets and stuff like that every once in a while because I, it's not part of my regular diet. So that's kind of like even an answer to the question, like, what about cheat meals? Like, my cheat meals will be if I'm out and I'm with a group or if I'm with my on a date and there's something there that's out of my normal, you know, uh, rest uh, menu, I'll, I'll eat it because I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm not having this with you. If you want to enjoy the food, I'll enjoy it with you. Um, but yeah, I I originally was, you know, going to be talking about just kind of ragging on people about, about coffee. Because every time I went to this one coffee shop, I would order Americano and they would always ask me if I want cream or sugar. And I would, I would kind of joke back at them. They were like, what do I look like, a little girl? That I need all this sweet stuff in my coffee? I was like, I'm not trying to drink candy. I'm trying to drink, I want to drink coffee. And so, uh, but also coffee, I, I started to learn, I don't know what it is. Uh, lately more so than before in my life but coffee actually puts me to sleep uh, or relaxes me so and sometimes it just kind of gives me a calm boost of energy so i can drink coffee and it won't i won't be all like jittery and all crazy although sometimes i notice my heartbeat gets a little faster but i also notice it it focuses me and um i i joke sometimes that and my sister said no you don't uh, that I that I might have ADHD because you know they give stimulants like Adderall, Adderall and Ritalin to people with ADD and ADHD and, and those are actually um, that's what people call speed right and it helps them to focus and calm down and so with me that's what coffee does coffee actually uh, really gets me focused but also just makes me calm 
it calms me down. Now, sometimes um, I might, if in the initial stages, I might maybe talk faster or get a little bit boosted up, but uh, but usually it doesn't. And as a matter of fact, right now, if I drink some coffee after I've I've woken, uh, I, I woke up. If I drink some now, I'll probably stop being as uh, energetic as I am right now, and and I have some extra bold, never bitter, stoke cold brew brew darker roast still smooth coffee here um, in a bottle, and I do need to settle in and do some. I need to get into my moon magic and mindfulness journal, and uh, go into my uh, my budget tracker. And uh, let's see, it's already uh, 11, a quarter after 11 right now. So I'm probably going to want to drive for a few hours before I go on shift at Central 111 later. So I do need to calm down and focus and then maybe probably take a nap a little bit later. So I'm I'm feeling rested for when I go on shift because tonight is Friday and Friday and Saturday are all always busy nights, also big money nights for me. So I want to make sure that I'm on point there when I'm with Dan, the enforcer at the door and uh get get that in but i I am glad that the conversation did turn to um some relationships and talk like that and you know i'm glad chuck came up and he you know was open and vulnerable about uh his recent uh loss and you know how he's dealing with it and we talked about that a little bit and you know these things in life are are very difficult for a lot of people to deal with and we all go through our uh our grief and our tragedy in different ways and i'm in no way over um floor elizabeth carrasco i'm in no way uh have moved on i'm not doing any better from it oh well actually that's the wrong way to put it um the grief has not gotten any uh, less i have just gotten better um there's a lot of ways and a lot of things that i still have to grow and continue to improve and get better but I know for a fact, and I won't, uh, I don't use the words in these palliative terms that people talk about that time heals and that um, you're going to move on and, and it, it, you'll get over it and all this, because that kind of bullshit I don't believe. Um, now, I'm saying that word, that bullshit, but many of you probably have dealt with it in that way. And so I'm not even going to take away from you in that. If you, Again, because I, I just said, and I would be hypocritical to be that everybody deals with it in their own way. So you deal with things in the way that you do. This is how I do it. I'm, I am allowing to the understanding that grief is hard and it's heavy for me and that it hasn't lessened in any way. And even now just talking about it, it, I feel like I want to cry. It's so hard, but uh, at the same time, I allow that to happen. I allow it to be, and I allow myself to feel it fully um, because why would I want it? I don't I don't see how it can go away because it's not like love goes away. I don't think that love goes away. I don't see how that can happen, at least not in me and in my life. And just when Floor and I were together here on this earth, um, as time went on, our relationship became more intense. It became more and more loving. We became more involved. We knew more about each other. We were doing more together. We were spending more time together. We were making more plans together. Uh, we were planning to have a family. There were there were so many things that I was doing with her that I had never done before. She broke me out of my shell. She improved me. She helped me to become better and to focus. And so as time goes along, I still love her. I still love her intensely. And that's no secret to anybody who talks to me or who's around me. And even my girlfriend, Marlene, now, it's not a, a thing. And she doesn't make light of it. She doesn't. Uh, make too much of a big deal out of it either like trying to comfort me and be fake about it it's not her problem it's not her issue um so it's good that um and that's how you know a lot of times we'll get on here and talking on wisdom and things will get turned into something completely different i came up here to to crack on you and make jokes about uh about people putting sweeteners and cream and stuff like that in their coffee and uh and then chuck came up and i knew that you know, what he was going through and we had a nice talk and it turned into the relationships and, um, and, you know, just like I had a talk, which I would recommend you guys check it out that I did, uh, the one previous to this, which was, um, I called it, um, 
materializing metaphysical money. And I was on there about to talk about numerology and some stories in my life about how numbers are working and with angel numbers. And then Chris, Christopher Birkenbein, the uh, NASA scientist who's, who's on here, who is a science communicator, um, came and talked to me and talked to me about the research that was done on numerology. And we talked about different things like confirmation bias and, and uh, ex intrinsic versus external motivation. And it was a really great all around talk, which was which was completely different of how the line that I was going to go on. And he did let me tell my stories about numerology and the things that I saw in my life, how I think that they're metaphysical and magic and things like that. And then he came back and talked very calmly and straightforward and just the way that he always does from since I first met him here on Wisdom, when we first had like a two hour conversation when I first met him here. Um, and he came up on one of my talks. And so that's the way that they tend to turn. And, um, and you know, Chuck is is right. And some people who, who may have said that my that I might seem a little bit different. But yeah, when when something feels right, and I don't know what the, the future is going to hold. And one of the points I was going to make earlier about a talk that I did before was how there's a lot of ups and downs, and that this too shall pass. The fact that when when Marlene sent me a text message while I was doing that talk and it just lifted me up and made me feel better. I was just smiling and, and giddy about it. But I said that that'll pass. That's just a temporary thing. That's like taking, you know, like a booster shot of something like a, or taking like a, an energy drink or even a pill or coffee or whatever it is that people do to put themselves up or down. Right. It doesn't last forever. It's temporary. It's uh, it's it's passing. It's transient. And the the thing that we have to realize is that our happiness comes from within. And this is, you know, Dr. Rao talked about this uh, um, on many of his talks that he was talking about calming the mind and also be yourself and how we have to learn. He was talking about the extrinsic motivation, how we have to find it within ourselves to find happiness about how there's, uh, you know, how suicides are on the rise and how people are becoming despondent and so many people are feeling lost. And I definitely know that feeling very deeply almost all the time. There are, you know, because I, I do rely on a lot of external motivation and a lot of times, and I've had to find ways to balance out um, being internally motivated and finding ways for me to go on and do things in this life and find you know, curiosity and and tell myself all the time, I have to stick around because I have to see what this life is about. I only have this one. And if I cut it short, then, you know, I'm not going to be able to realize all of the things that I possibly can in this life. And also, I under I have an understanding that there are actually a lot of things that we learn in this physical world that we will carry over into the spiritual world, if you will, when we die, when we depart from our bodies. That there are so many things that we can learn here that this is actually a training ground with things like meditation and lucid dreaming and looking at things like numbers and metaphysics. And yes, even science, because there's a lot of things in science that I brought into my dreams. I remember the first time that I read um, Albert Einstein's theory on special relativity. I then had a dream that I was in a in a in a javelin fight with zombie creatures and it was mimicking the thought experiment that Einstein did with with light, except it was with javelins. And I don't want to get too much into that, but the equation basically showed that the time uh, that it takes from an object to get from A to B, if it's the same from B to A, then you have a constant. And that's how he discovered that, the, that light has a constant. And that no matter how fast the object is moving that you, you project a beam of light from, it's still going to move at the exact same speed that it moves all the time. It doesn't move faster just because the source of the light is moving faster. So, um, and my dream depicted that and I, and I got a better understanding of it from there. So, so many things that we do will carry over into the spiritual world, the dream world, and many other worlds. And so, I'm going to indulge myself in a little bit of this coffee paradox here, where now I'm going to, actually, matter of fact, I have this big old bottle here. 48 fluid ounces of coffee. First, I'm going to transfer some into my beautiful uh, a mug that I have somewhere around here, around these here parts. Where did I put it? 
and I'm going to take drink some and get myself set up to go sit down in the bookstore and uh, and get some writing done. I got to start with my moon magic and mindfulness. And uh, oh, first, man, as I clicketh. Uh, hello, Gracia Lamore. Uh, whether you're here in the room or just passing through, Alan Sajoth was here. Thank you for coming up and uh, giving me some encouragement about um, my steps through dating and uh, relationships. I appreciate that encouragement. It's good to hear that people understand where I'm coming from. Uh, Purple Love stop through Mojo. Chuck, thank you for coming up and talking to me for for a little bit. Dr. Robert James Goodman. Uh, Genji Lake. Oh, that is a pretty cool name. Uh, Raylan F. Truly Julie, Cecilia Grace, T. Solo, Christopher John Martins, Wyburn 22, Bobby Vivench, Darlene Anderson stopped through, Dr. Tim Stafford, Sonia Sundara, hello, MC Frontrun, Dio, Dio Akin Renati, the founder of, of Wisdom, stopped through, uh, Karaoke Vox, Daryl with the Dashes, what's up, Daryl? Uh, Alejandro Tornado, Yusuf Wasserman, heard you talking a few times, hey, Wandering Fool, Came through Miss Cicely Marie, Reggie Wood Woodson, what's up? Greg's Take, uh, Vershana Brooks, L, <laughs> simply L. Coolio D. Jones, what's up? I know I saw you earlier somewhere. What's up, Coolio? Uh, Malcolm Anderpoint, Amir Ali, and Marissa Neto. Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for stopping through. I'm going to cut this out. Of course, I am, this is Hitman, right? Hakeem in the morning, afternoon, and night. H-I-T-M-A-N, so you never know when I'm going to pop through. I don't have a regular talk, but I'm regularly on Wisdom these days. Until next time, stay well.